new M5, says BMW, is a cleaner, more economical, more socially aware machine than the snarling gas guzzler it seeks to replace. Its twin-turbo V8 engine, for example, might not be as pure as traditionalists would have liked, but it still produces 10% more power than the old V10 and burns 30% less fuel. So this then is an ecologically responsible M5, a car that isn't going to ruin our planet in its quest to deliver the ultimate driving thrill. Well, sort of. So, the hard points of the new BMW M5. It costs £73,000. It has 552 bhp. It will get to 60 miles an hour in 4.4 seconds and it's limited rather ridiculously to 155 miles an hour. But this car is so much more than that when you start driving it. So this engine, from the outside, it does sound the nuts. There is no doubt about that. But from the inside, I am a little bit disappointed that it doesn't make a bit more noise. This is full throttle in third gear. I mean, it's a nice enough noise, but I just want a bit more of it to tell me, to confirm to my ears that this is actually an M5. One thing that they didn't get right at all in the old car was the gearbox. It's the first time that they'd used a proper sequential gearbox in an M5 and they made a bit of a mess of it, but blimey, they have corrected that mistake this time. The gearbox in this car is fantastic, but you've actually got less selection modes. You had five last time, now you've only got three. So they've kind of made it less complex, but the, the shift changes, the shift speeds, and just the smoothness of the the way you can upshift or downshift is just amazing. The gearbox in this car is, for me, the standout item amongst quite a few good items. I've been trying to work out what this car feels like when you put your foot down and go up through the gears, and I've done it. It feels a little bit like Bugatti Veyron in the way it just sucks the horizon towards you. And I guess you can't really pay BMW's engineers much more of a compliment than that. Because, I don't know, an M5 that feels like a Veyron, that's mental, but it's true. Now, let's come to one of the crunch matters, which is how much this car weighs. 1,945 kilograms. That is ridiculous. Range Rovers used to weigh less than that not too long ago. However, I don't know how they've done it, but BMW's chassis engineers have managed to make this thing really handle and really ride. It feels as if it weighs about 1,600 kilograms, so they've pulled off a right trick there. Right, the steering. It is good with a small g. Why? I think it feels a little bit fake, to be perfectly honest. It's very accurate, you can be very precise where you put the nose, but the feel is a bit weird, and that is because there's a bit more to the steering than meets the eye. In fact, I might have to slow down and stop and show you what's what here. It's all to do with the M drive system, because you've now got two buttons which change not only the characteristics within the steering, but also the dampers and the throttle response, and the gear change speed as well. So really, what you're ending up with is, is an electronic artificial feel to the steering in all of its modes, and it never quite nails it in any of them. So it's obviously a very good car, the new M5, but is it a great one? Well, yes, I actually have to think it is. And it's the overall picture that is so impressive. It's not just the straight line performance, which is absolutely nuts. It's the ride, the handling, the refinement. Everything it does, it does brilliantly. And you know what? Overall, I'm glad they didn't tone it down too much because it is, at heart, still a proper lunatic's car. 